Hello all. In this video, I will go over my solution for the easy version of problem C. This problem is an excellent problem which teaches you how to use prefix sums and prefix dos in binary search. So that will be the theme of this problem. So in this problem, we are basically given an array of n integers a1 through a n, and for each segment of the array we are given the function of that segment as the sum of all elements in that subsequence minus the zor of all the elements in that subsequence so we want to maximize this function for all possible sub segments of the array so we are given one query and the query contains the range 1 to n and we want to find out what is the maximum value of FLR across all possible subsequences in this array? So let's take an example. Let's say that n is 1 and we have only one element which is 0. So clearly the sum of the elements is 0 and the zor of the elements is 0. So 0 minus 0 is 0 and we will just print the range as 1 to 1. Now in the second example, we have the array 5 comma 10. So there are three possible ranges. One range is 1 comma 1, the other range is 2 comma 2 and the third possible range is 1 comma 2. So in the range 1 comma 2, you can see that the sum of the elements is 5 plus 10, which is 15. And the zor of the elements is 5 zor 10, which is also 15. So either way is 15 minus 15 will give you 0. So 5 minus 5 gives you 0, 10 minus 10 gives you 0 and 15 minus 15 gives you 0. So FLR is 0. So that's why we want to find out the range which has the smallest length and the smallest length will be for the range 1 comma 1 or 2 comma 2. So both of those are valid output. So you can print 2 comma 2 as well because the size of the range is 1. Now in the third example, again you can see that uh, for any possible range of elements, the sum of the elements minus the zor of the elements will be 0. So that's why you'll choose the smallest range, which is either 1, 1 or 2, 2 or 3, 3. 2, 3 will also give you FLR equal to 0, but it is a larger range, which is why you will ignore that and you will choose a one size range, which is 1, 1 or 2, 2 or 3, 3. Then in the next example, this is the first example where the zor is not necessarily equal to 0. So I mean the sum minus the zor is not 0 because in the range 2, 3, if you consider the range 2, 3, you will see that 12 zor 8 is equal to 4 and 12 plus 8 minus 4 will give you 16. So the value of f2, 3 is 16, which is the maximum value. You can verify that in the other ranges. So for example, if you have the range uh, from 2 to 4 and if you subtract out 12 zor 8 zor 3 so 12 sorry 12 zor 8 zor 3 will is 7 and 23 minus 7 is 16 so even that range the range from 2 to 4 has a sum minus zor equal to 16 but you will choose the smaller range of 2 to 3 so since 2 to 3 and 2 to 4 both have f of uh, L comma R equal to 16, you will choose the smaller one which is 2 to 3 and you will print 2 to 3 and you can verify that the correct output is uh, 2 to 3 and in the fifth test case as well there are two correct outputs 2 to 3 and 3 to 4 both of them have a uh, f value equal to 64 so you will choose either one of them both of them have the same length so it's fine if you print 2 to 3 or if you print 3 to 4 so in general, you can see that we are trying to maximize the value of the sum of the elements while minimizing while minimizing the value of the zor of the elements. And we want to find the smallest range as well. Now we need to make an observation uh, in order to uh, figure out how to solve this problem efficiently because the brute force solution would be n square. It would be going through all possible ranges. So going through all possible n, l, r and finding out the sum minus the zor and that takes n square time and uh, we need to do better because n can be up to 10 power of 5 
so let's make one key observation uh, that observation relies on the fact that when you change a range from l to r to l l to r plus 1 in other words if you increase the size of the range then the key idea is that the sum will increase by the new added element so the sum will increase by a of r plus 1 but the zor can decrease so the sum will increase by a of r plus 1 and the zor can increase by at most a of r plus 1 so it's possible that the zor decreases but the maximum increase in the zor is a of r plus 1 so this is why we will always increase the size of the range and once you increase the size of the range the sum will definitely increase by the new value but the zor can decrease as well and if the zor does increase it will increase by at most a of r plus 1 um, in other words the maximum range the range from 1 to n will give you the maximum value of the sum of elements minus the zor of all elements and that's why the range 1 to n is the optimal range for finding f of l to r so f of 1 to n f of 1 to n is the maximum possible value of f and now what we want to do is we want to find out what is the minimum size range which which gives us the same value of f 1 to n since we know that f of 1 to n will give us this maximum value we want to check whether there is a smaller subarray f l to r which will give us the same value so we want to check whether two indices l and r exist which are between 1 and n and which will give us the same value of l f l to r so in order to do that we we'll, we can either na navely iterate again through all the subarrays and calculate the f values and check whether that f l to r is equal to f 1 to n or we can be more clever and over here we need to again look back at the first observation the key observation was that increasing the size of the range always increases the sum minus the zor this means that if you choose a smaller range you will get a smaller value of the sum minus the zor and that's why you can binary search over the size of the range so if you binary search to find the smallest such subarray or uh, you can determine whether or not a subarray exists such that the sum of the elements in the subarray minus the zor of the elements in the subarray is equal to f f 1 to n and the proof for this relies on the fact that if you have a larger subarray you will get a higher value of the sum minus the zor and a smaller subarray will necessarily give you a smaller value of the sum minus the zor and that's why binary search is possible because it's a monotonic function and now all we need to do is figure out how we can actually implement the binary search uh, in which we need to iterate through all subarrays of a specified size so let's look at that check function in the binary search the check function will look something like this we are iterating through all subarrays of a fixed size which is the size which we are binary searching on currently and the check function will return true if any such range exists which has a sum minus the zor equal to the sum of the entire array minus the zor of the entire array so if any such range exists of size mid we return true otherwise we return false and i basically goes from 1 till n minus mid plus 1 because we know that the final array the final value will be from n minus mid plus 1 to n so this is the last mid sized subarray and that's why i will go from 1 till that particular value you can verify that the size of this is equal to mid so this is the check function and in the main method we can just binary search using this check function so now i'll show you the code which implements the same idea of binary searching for the fixed size of course we will also need to store we will also need to store the the particular indices so we can return the left endpoint the right endpoint as well and over here we can return false because we haven't found any uh, any subarray of size mid so if we return true we can 
set the left end point to be i and the right end point to be i plus mid plus i plus mid minus one because we know that this subarray from i to i plus mid minus one has has this size uh, which, which is smaller than n and it also has the sum minus the or equal to the maximum sum minus the minimum or so that's why we will return true and we will return the the range as well because in the end we need to print the range we don't need to print the value of f we need to actually print the range so now i'll show you the code which implements the same thing of finding the optimal range and of printing the left and right endpoints of the range in the code for each test case i take in the value of n and q we know that q the number of queries is equal to 1 in this subtask we will also store the vectors a ps refers to prefix sums and px refers to prefix zors x is the zor of all elements so zor sum of the range 1 to n and sum is the sum of the range 1 to n and we know that sum minus x is the maximum value of f because increasing the size of the range increasing the range always always uh, increases slash keeps the same f value because or uh, as i just mentioned in the very beginning the sum can the sum increases by the newly added element and the zor increases by at most the newly added element it can decrease as well but it cannot change by more than plus the newly added element so that's why the total value of the function will always see this stay the same or it will increase it can never decrease and this is the uh, main observation behind which we can conclude that the sum of all the elements minus the zor of all the elements will give you the optimal value of f uh, we use prefix sums and prefix zors because we want to quickly find out what is the uh, prefix what, what is the sum in a range and what is the zor in a range so the sum in a range is given by sum sum l to r is given by sum of r is given by prefix sum of r minus prefix sum of l minus 1 and the zor in the range l to r is given by prefix zor of r zor with prefix zor of l minus 1 so this is a basic prefix sum and prefix zor property and um, we can use this in the binary search so we are binary searching for the size binary searching for the optimal size for the smallest size we know that the answer or the uh, we know that uh, initially the answer is n because we know that the entire array has the optimal value of f and whenever we get a valid value of uh, of mid we can just set the answer to be mid and we can search for a smaller range however if we haven't found a range with this value of mid we want to search for a larger range and in this way we can update the values of l and r and in the main part of the binary search we go for all i going from 1 to n minus mid plus 1 we check whether this range check if this range has a f value equal to f of 1 to n and we know that f of 1 to n is sum minus x and we know that the f value of this range will be the sum of all the elements minus the zor of all the elements so if these two match we will we have found a range and we set the i we, we set the left end point to be i and the right end point to be i plus mid minus one because it's a range starting at i so range starts at i and goes till i plus mid minus one has a length of mid which is why the right end point is i plus mid minus one because the entire range has to have a length of mid 
and uh, given these constraints we can uh, find the left and right end points and in the end we will just print this value of the left and right end points so we know that there's only one query and we know that l is equal to 1 and r is equal to n for this subtask and that's why we can just print answer of l and answer of r so you can verify that this code gets accepted and i hope you like this problem and my solution if you have any doubts do leave them in the comments down below and if you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up thank you